I know there's a few of you who clicked on this video and who just want to get to the point on how to fix your shoes so they can possibly go from chewed up and scratched up on the left to what you see on the right. So here is something, go ahead and feel free to pause and screenshot and it has all the steps. And yes, this can work for all kinds of colors and potentially different materials. But if you want more detail and to come along with me in this shared experience, then keep watching. Well, say hello. Hello everybody. You. So these were in perfect condition. There is absolutely, besides like the interior wear, they're perfectly fine. But then this guy overnight, I, I had them up here for one night. And you can see, I kind of already tried to cover it in Sharpie. Just, I don't know, maybe that was a frantic quick solution, but those little notches bite marks and I'd already taken pictures of these because I was thinking of putting them up on Poshmark and there was nothing wrong and absolutely nothing here I know I was just to make sure I went back and looked at the pictures and yep they were in perfect condition see those little scratches right there but this shoe this one got the brunt of it those little marks which who cares right that's the heel but this he did this and yeah, again, I already, you could kind of tell I colored them in with uh, Sharpie. I'm going to do a little, little experiment here and see if I can fix this. I was going to take them to my local cobbler, which is a shoe repair shop. If you didn't know, I feel like I just learned that in the past, like, maybe five years. I'm filming this in case it works. So I'm going to take my blow dryer. Yeah, just blow dry the high heat and see if it will kind of fix it and mold it back into what it should be potentially. So I'm going to try the high heat. We're going to see if that works. Something else, if that if that doesn't work, something else that I researched that could work. And this is all kind of stuff to do at home because of course you can take it somewhere like my cobbler and I'm sure they can kind of replace, you know, faux leather that's here and all that stuff. However, we're going to see if these DIY kind of thing works. So first thing is going to be the high heat. Second thing is going to be melting and molding wax into the holes. And then I just so happen to have in my arsenal of things... I just so happen to have black leather paint, acrylic leather paint. We'll see if I need this. Um, this is a lot of work for shoes that, you know, I could just donate, let's be honest, but I guess this could be a, a helpful solution. Yes, you, you're the guilty party, sir. This is rare for me. I think it's just because they were up there, they probably fell over and he was bored and chewed it because this never happens in this household. It's a good opportunity. It's a good DIY helper opportunity. Anyway, I'm talking too much, I'm aware. Okay, let's try this. All right, here we are. I have my probably 20 year old hair dryer and the shoes. I'm gonna put it on the highest heat against this, kind of going back and forth. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to film it at the same time, but I'm going to do that and then see if it changes the consistency with my fingers and see what this does. So stand by. Okay, so. I have some thoughts about this. I did it for three minutes, low air setting, so low like power setting, but high heat. And then started like pressing into it. A couple things I noticed. One, you can see because of the heat, the glue kind of softens up because this is the side I didn't really do and this is the side I did. You can see that the glue kind of softens up. Second thing is I do think this would be effective kind of for more superficial scratches and things like that because you see these lines like this one wasn't there before. This one wasn't there before. These tiny little lines. I have long nails and I didn't think like when I was pressing in not even you know crazy hard but it definitely softens the material because those are from my nails. Those so I kind of made it worse. This, I think, would definitely work for more superficial scratches considering it's a different color underneath, so that's where the paint would probably come in. So I do think it helped up here, though. I feel like that's better. So maybe this is kind of a different material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the heat a little bit more, maybe get a paper towel or something that kind of matches the textured look on here and press that into it instead of my fingers just because I don't want my nails to mess it up even more. And then I'll, I'll kind of have like a final opinion about this before we move on. It looks like we're gonna have to do so. Okay, let's see. Okay, update. It might look a little worse but I'll explain why. I do think the heat helped to shape this upper part. It, Felt like it was. Again, I used the paper towel in my finger a little bit. For this, I used the paper towel again, but I actually kind of rubbed it this time. You could see 
like little pieces rubbed off and stuff. I do think this heat would work, like I said, for more superficial kind of scuffs or little scrapes and things because it does soften the material. But might as well try this wax idea next. And I'm just gonna use wax from a candle, to be honest. So I'm gonna melt some wax and then I'm going, if I have a black candle, <laughs> I'll use that. But then I'm gonna take it and kind of rub it into the grooves to make it more even and see if that helps. And then this spot on this heel, I feel like it did help. So this is worth trying. Basically, this is more of a, like, try it with me and we'll see if it works together. So try the high heat thing, see if it works. If you have long nails, be careful because you could add even more little dents like I did, unfortunately. So get a paper towel and maybe even a tool like the end of something round, like a toothbrush or maybe even a, a Q-tip or, or just something with a round kind of end. Wrap the paper towel around that and then gently kind of press press and roll into it and see if it helps whatever material your cat got into or dog got into or whatever. So that was trial one using the heat. It does do something, but it didn't fix my particular issue. So let's move on. Here we are. So looking at this again, I will say I honestly think that just using that acrylic paint would be sufficient. There are some deeper ones, but because I said I would, we are going to try and use some candle action. This is the darkest color I could find that I had. I'm surprised. I thought I would have a black candle, but so I am just going to light this and melt a little bit and then drip it on the deeper grooves. Won't need much. Use my fingers to kind of press it in there and see how it works because I do have a high tolerance for heat. So if you are not sure because wax gets very, very hot, then you should definitely use some kind of tool. But we're trying this out together, so let me do that and um, stand by. The candle is lit. All right. Okay, real quick. Um, didn't have to light it for long. Tilted it over, put a few drops on here. A little goes a long way. So it looks like this right now. You can see where I just freshly dropped them. It cools down quick. I'm gonna take my finger and basically just press it into the spots while it's still more pliable. Okay, I know this looks rough, but I'm feeling really, really good about this, actually. I'm pretty excited. So I'm still pushing it in and rubbing it in while it's still soft and pliable. And then I'm gonna take maybe the paper towel to it and, and rub all its all of it off. You can see it's kind of rubbing off now. I'm so sorry I can't film this at the same time I'm doing it. I'm really not sure how I'm, I can do that. I don't have like a thing to hold my phone. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, stand by. This is where we are. I've been slowly pressing and rubbing with the paper towel, still making progress, but you can see the wax is filling up the spots, if I can get it to focus. This is kind of too hard at this point, so I'm just gonna take um, the blow dryer again to this just for a few seconds to soften it a little bit and then keep going with the paper towel. Okay, so I took the blow dryer to certain spots just for like maybe five, five, 10 seconds to soften the wax a little bit more. And you can see, I it's kind of hard to tell here, but all of those light spots are where the wax actually settled in. So I used a combination of my finger and the paper towel to just rub it in there, but not too hard because you, you want it to be as flush as possible. But you could see that the wax did take more to the deeper grooves and even all of the little marks, all of those little grayish purplish marks are the wax. So I would probably just kind of wipe the shoe down first and then go do the wax first and then use the blow dryer to kind of help shape it into the holes. But you will definitely need the, the matching paint color. Obviously this isn't enough, so. We are going to do the paint next, and probably, I don't think you can spot try. I think it's, you, you know, probably gonna have to do the whole heel. Yes, okay, let's see if this works. Here we are, I have my paint. I got just this paintbrush. I wasn't sure which one to choose, but just a basic one, because what I plan on doing first is using the brush to just do all of the, individual little spots as you can see and in retrospect looking at it I think it might be a better idea to do two rounds of the wax just to make sure that it is as flush as possible I mean maybe this is enough we'll see when I put the paint on I also grabbed a sponge because my plan is 
to just dab my paintbrush in this. I was thinking of pouring it on something, but I shook it really well. I'm going to dab my paintbrush in that, do the individual spots, and then let's come back and see what that looks like because my plan after that to match the texture a little better was going to be to cut off a little piece of the sponge once I get those spots painted and then to kind of dab it on top as a second coat. And I'm thinking for consistency, I'm gonna have to do the whole entire heel, but let me do that first step just with the paintbrush and getting the little spots and check back in. You guys, I'm so excited. Okay, let me show you. Try not to touch it in case uh, it's still wet. So uh, I, I've been doing this all of 10 minutes. I'll show you everything, but so far I used the paintbrush and you just need the very littlest bit. So after I shook it up, there were some on the cap and then I've just been kind of wiping it on the inside of the um, bottleneck right there. And that's been enough to do this, but look at the difference already. Okay, so in the light, I'm very excited by this because in person it looks really good, but in the light, you could still see those grooves and marks, but that's because I first was dotting the paint into the little grooves and crevices. Oh, and I can't remember if I mentioned this, but make sure that you wipe whatever you're going to paint down with a microfiber cloth or something just, you know, to get it nice and clean without any dust or dirt or cat hair, for example. You can see that it looks like there's a little more paint where the grooves are, and that's because there is, but even just putting the paint first on it was such a difference so I ended up painting this entire area and then I went back with the tip of the paintbrush and would just dot a little bit more saturated areas of paint where the little grooves are so that's what you see but even just now the before and after honestly like if this is on the the you know, this is a shoe on the ground. This was one of the bigger grooves right here. Like if you're in a rush, this, this would even be sufficient. Close up, you know, we're really looking at the detail, but that was a big groove right there. A big cat scratch bite mark. And then I decided just for matching sake to paint the back of this one, which just had that little mark right there, which I think was from my nail, honestly. So I just painted this one and kind of dotted it a little extra in those two marks right there, but it's barely noticeable. And then on this one, I'll put the before picture, but you can you can see them because of the reflection. Um, but so taking the blow dryer that made a difference. I think I showed that already. Uh, just in pressing it down, I didn't do the wax on this. So you could see the difference that it makes when you do the wax to kind of make it more flush with the shoe material. But yeah, so I painted that tip and I didn't paint this one just to show. It just adds a little shine. I didn't do the sponge yet, so I'm thinking I might let all of this dry a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna paint this one just, you know, so it's a little matchy or I might just sponge this one but yes very exciting by the way I got this off Amazon I'll link it in the description below they have tons of colors I just got black and white for some projects that I planned on doing but fortunately it's working for this I'm gonna let it dry for maybe five ten minutes and then I'm gonna take the sponge to it to do a second layer just on both heels and both toes and once it is dry, we will see the final result. But I really think that this kind of can save the harshness if your pets or whatever chew on your, your shoes or purse or belt or whatever, the leather thing. Okay, stand by. All right, here we go. I took the sponge to it and just dab, dab, dabbed all over the place. It dries pretty quickly. You can see the light. I feel like it does it injustice a little bit you could still see like the marks are there. And again, it depends on the light and the shine, but the improvement is so good. And honestly, I believe that if I would have taken my time more, cause I, I've kind of done this in a rush. If I would have taken my time more with the wax, maybe doing the wax step twice to make sure that it really shaped and, and formed in those little grooves and then done this just if I would have taken my time more. Yeah, I totally rushed it, but it, it would have been an even better job. But this in person is super sufficient and you can see, well, there's already dust back on them again. This one had those little marks that I didn't put the wax on so you could see the difference. If they do look white or gray still, it's just the reflection. Yeah, you could see better here. And that's on the toes. I just, who cares? I just did that as an experiment. The next step I'm going to do is once the paint dries, you wanna do the finisher. 
This is a matte finisher and I'm gonna put this on in a little bit and you can brush this on or you can sponge it on or you can rag it on. I'm probably gonna just brush it on. And the sponge step, you need very little, just like the paintbrush and I just dab, dab, dabbed. And yeah, the difference. I mean, I feel like they're pretty much fixed. This is really exciting. So yeah, I guess that's it. That is what I did. I think it was a success. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll put a picture in right here of how they look after I put this matte acrylic finisher on it just to seal everything and make sure it's all nice and good. And actually, I'll also put a link to my Poshmark closet <laughs> in the pinned comment probably in the description because like I said, I was gonna sell these and I have some really cool stuff on there. And let me know if you have a cat if you get anything because I might send you a little something extra, a little bonus for your kitty. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you've had this happen and what you did about it. And if you try out this hack with the heat and the wax and the paint, let me know in the comments below because I'd be super interested to hear if this works out well for you. And remember, they have a bunch of different colors on Amazon in the same listing where I got all of these. Thanks for watching and sticking around through the whole process. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Is he okay though? Grandpa! Oh, he can't hear me through the glass. That, that, that's a little concerning. <laughs> if I wasn't just out there petting him, I would think that that was a dead cat on my lawn. But I think he's just really comfortable. Oh, there goes a little kick. Okay, we're good. I think he's pretty comfortable. Funny boy. Okay. <laughs>